Welcome to the show. We are so glad you're here for another episode of The Nonprofit Show. And today our guest is Josh Meyer joining us as Vice President with Bloomerang. So excited to have you, Josh. And you're here to talk to us about the 2023 Fundraising Effectiveness Project Takeaway. So right up my alley, super nerdy, ready to get nerdy with you and and see what this looks like. But before you dive in, to the project, we want to remind our viewers and our listeners who we are, if we haven't met yet. So Julia Patrick, hello to you. Mm -hmm. Julia serves as the CEO with the American Nonprofit Academy. And thanks to her, we are 800 plus episodes strong. So Josh, you are 801. Just want you to know you're way more than a number, but we of course want to recognize that. Um, And I'm Jarrett Ransom, nonprofit nerd and CEO of The Raven Group. And again, honored to serve alongside as co-host here for The Nonprofit Show. We could not do these uh, episodes without our amazing, loyal, dedicated, generous sponsors. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our presenting sponsors. So a huge shout out to our besties, over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, nonprofit nerd, and the nonprofit tech talk. These companies are amazing. Many have been with us from the very beginning, again, helping us to create so much uh content, free content, if you will. And again, just thank you so much. So please do check them out. I like to remind everyone that their mission is your mission because they want to help you elevate and do more good in, around, and throughout your community. So please do do us a favor, do yourself a favor, but do our sponsors a favor and please do check out these amazing companies. Hey, as I said, we have a lot that you can indulge in. So please do check out the previous episodes going all the way back to March of 2020. And you can find these episodes on multiple platforms, which include streaming broadcast uh, channels. We also are in podcast form. For So for those of you that are auditory, or maybe you've got some trips coming up this summer and you just want to plug in and listen. And then also the latest and greatest is you can download the app. So on any of your smartphones, you can pull up in the app store, the nonprofit show. And in just a couple of hours, few hours uh, today, you will see the episode uploaded that we are having right now with Josh. So with that, we want to welcome you here to the hot seat. Dun, dun, dun. So Josh Meyer, Vice President, Demand Generation with Bloomerang. Welcome, my friend. Well, it is a pleasure to be back here. And for those of you that I haven't had the chance to meet, um, welcome. So so glad that you could join us this morning uh, as we sort of talk dirty, not dirty, talk, get dirty with the data. Jeez, yeah. Oh, wow. I need a, it is early here on the West Coast. I'm going to have another cup of coffee. <laughs> we can't talk dirty because it's the dirty nerdy talk, right? Dirty so nerdy. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we're going to get into. And we really do think that data is sexy. So talking about the fundraising effectiveness project with you, I couldn't think of anyone better to really get into, you know, all of the juicy details. So Josh, tell us a little bit about the, like the impetus of the fundraising effectiveness project, how it got started, who were the players involved and just, you know, give us kind of that overarching if you would. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, fundraising effectiveness project is a program outside of, out of the AFP Global. So the Association of Fundraising Professionals. And it's uh, it's a number of the donor databases and CRMs have sort of gotten together to share data, right? So it's Bloomerang, but it's also, you know, our friends over at Neon and Donor Perfect and Kila and uh, Bonterra adds uh, some of their data at, 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 analysts in there to sort of help us understand the data. And we meet quarterly uh, to sort of look at what are the trends that are happening in the industry, right? Uh, So we anonymize the data, pull it all together and see, you know, what's happening? Where are we seeing increases and where are we seeing decreases to uh, better inform uh, the nonprofits out there, but also to inform the tools that we're creating, right? The software that we're building uh, so that we can make it easier to um, work with some of the challenges that we see in the data, to make it easier for those nonprofits to um, dive into their data and sort of really hone in on what aspects of the data they should be focused on to sort of improve their fundraising and um, you know ultimately then sort of drive towards their mission. Yeah. You know, I think of all the, the things that we see, um, this to me is the most important because it is 
it's almost like a miracle in this day and age to think that all of these, if you will, competing entities come together, they share their data, and to your point, it's all anonymous. But this is like a real time, because you're doing it quarterly, we don't have to wait for some of these studies that take more than a year. We can see what some of these trajectories are. And then um, I love, I'm assuming that, that you at Bloomerang, you're looking at where you need to make your own investments as well. You're not just sharing the data, but you're improving your product lines, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think one of the things we're going to talk about today here, right, is donor retention. And so we really focused as we built out Bloomerang is how do we make it really easy for fundraisers to, to calculate their donor retention, right? It's not, it's like a little tricky, right? Because you're looking at all of the donors that give, that gave last year, and then all of those that gave last year, how many made a gift again this year, right? That's a little when you're sort of using spreadsheets or things along those lines, right, it can be challenging, but if we can make that super easy for fundraisers, it's then they can sort of track their progress. Yeah. Are the tactics that they're doing in the field, right? Are they, you know, the phone calls that they're making, the thank you notes that they're writing, right? Is that helping to move the needle? If we can make that easier for fundraisers, then I think we all win, right? As an industry, uh, you know, we're all putting our best foot forward. Yeah. Well, let's get into this. I'm excited. We're going to start off uh, with some, mm, dare I say, hot like news. not so hot news, right? <laughs> yeah. The dollars raised, they're actually down and that percentage is 1.7%. Tell us what this means and 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 really, you know, like what what we can expect moving forward. Yeah. So that 1.7% 1. 1. is uh, 2022, all of 2022 in comparison of all of 2021. And so, you know, I think one and on one level, right, I'm sort of thinking like, are there still sort of COVID in, you know, impacts, right? Uh, maybe, maybe not, right? We're sort of on the other side of this now. Uh, but, you know, when you're comparing it to 2021, right, there was like a bigger impact there. But I think the bigger takeaway here is, if you look at the um, the total dollars raised, right, 75% of that came from what FEP defines as major or large donors. So donors that gave $5,000 or more. Yeah. And so it's like a little bit of a head scratcher, but not really. It's sort of like, what is your donor, you know, as a nonprofit, like what's the takeaway here? It's like, what is your, what is your major gifts strategy? Are you making it easy for um, uh, you know, major donors to give. And I think we start thinking about like, what are the vehicles that major donors give, right? And sometimes it's cash, but oftentimes it's stock or securities, right? Or donor advised funds, or, you know, I, a year ago, I would have probably said crypto today. I'm not sure, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think it's also, it, but it's how are you making it easy for your donors? So if you're a small nonprofit, do you know, do you have a process in place to accept stock, right? Because right. one stock gift could make um, make up for, you know, so many smaller, smaller donations. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's making sure that you have the systems and the oper operational um, mechanisms in place to be able to take those kinds of gifts. And whether that's, you know, um, investing in some software or there's actually a number of software and it, we, we actually don't do it yet. Uh, but there's a number of software that it, it is relatively free. There's some processing fees right involved in it, but um, that can make this easier. So I think it's it's taking the time to kind of invest in sort of what's your overall major gift strategy. The other piece on that is where are you finding new major donors, right? Yeah. How are you um, prospecting? Whether that's you know uh, you know tapping in relationships that your board members may have. Or are you using uh, services like a donor, uh, I'm totally blanked right now, Windfall, um, Donor Search, right? Some of the data aggregators out there that are sort of pulling together wealth information. Um, and then how are you feeding that into your donor database? And how are you laying that over to people that are already in your donor database, but then also using that information to potentially reach out and find um, other major donors? And so, so I think, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I can't help but to wonder if some of our workforce challenges, Josh, over mm. the last year, 18 months, is impacting the decrease in the dollars raised, right? Like, I just, I don't know if the project talks about a correlation in that, but I can't help but to consider that option. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of it. I think the other piece is like boomers, right? Like boomers are leaving the workforce. I mean, many of them are out already, but then it's also they're sort of leaving us, right? I mean, right. No, there's no other way to look at that. They're 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 passing on, yeah. and so it's also there's a there's a, a like a component of this as well as um, what's your planned giving strategy, right? Exactly. And sort of how are you layering that in, and you know. Uh, how are you talking about that? And so some of those major donors, so some of this could be major donors, right? That sort of were significantly making big gifts that are no longer with us. But like, did you take the opportunity to develop um, a planned giving strategy so that when they did pass, they left, they left that, that gift. But then you got to fill the other side of the funnel, right? Which is how do you bring new people in? Right. right. And that's, I think the other, the other thing that um, is worth talking about. Yeah. You know, you talk about this reduction uh, of donor participation, but this, while that stat you gave us was last year, I think it's really important to acknowledge that this is a trend over the past decade. So it's not just like, oh, well, it was a bad year. I mean, we're kind of seeing some shifts and some changes. Um, talk to us a little bit about that, of what it is you think we can kind of attribute that to and maybe how we can kind of mitigate that. Yeah. So dollars down was 1.7%. Mm -hmm. Donors, right? So individual donors was down 10%. And so, right. And, but the, the, mean, the way the way that that math works is because remember 75% of your donor or 75% of the dollars is coming from those major gifts. So you have a lot. So what that tells us is that a lot of the smaller donors are just not, um, they're not coming back, right? The major gifts are sort of offsetting it a little bit, but like 10% down on donors, 1.7% down on dollars. Yeah. Sorry, there's like, I think, Julie, you're going to pop in there in a question. Well, I mean, it, it's really an interesting aspect because it speaks to, to me, the overall arching theme that you brought up is donor retention, that we need to really be thinking about this um, because of the, that shift and where our donors are, are coming from. And I would say how they're coming to us, right? Um, it's such an interesting thing. Talk to us a little bit about um, volunteerism because you have addressed that in different times with us and you had some really important pieces on how volunteerism factors into donor retention, factors into the cultivation piece. And we don't necessarily talk about that enough. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's interesting. So like, as we're trying to think about, all right, so donors are down by 10%. We know the sort of the major gift. We talked a little bit about sort of what should you be doing to bring in no, uh, new major donors, but sort of how do we get that other piece of the puzzle, right? And one thing that, you know, I've been giving some more thought about recently is, all right, so these nonprofits have these amazing volunteers, but are we asking volunteers to, to make a gift? Right. And I think sometimes we get a little nervous about that. Well, you yes. know, they can't, maybe they can't afford it or, you know, they just want to volunteer. So we shouldn't ask them. But I think that's probably not the case. So I was doing a little research recently and I saw um, a couple of stats here that kind of stuck stuck with me. Uh, Fidelity um, Charitable Trust or the, the Fidelity uh, Donor Advised Fund did some research relatively recently. And they saw that 42% um, of volunteers, 42% of people that donated previously had volunteered for the organization. Right. right. So they started. So it was like the gateway into the organization was they volunteered. They saw the amazing impact um, that that organization was having on the community. And then they made a gift. And then the other stat, I think, that really stuck out from that from that research is of those that were volunteers first, 50 um, percent made a larger gift than uh, had they not been a volunteer. Right. So there is this like connection with uh, people that are volunteering for nonprofits uh, and, and their and their giving patterns. And so the, the question I, I take back to the audience is, how are you stewarding your volunteers? Right. How are you asking them? Right. I think sometimes, again, we get little we get a little nervous like that, you know, but we got to ask, 
The worst thing they're going to say is no. And I think if you do it in a tactful manner, it's not going to no, it's not going to upset anyone, right? So you just got to sort of figure that out and then maybe even do some research, right? So if you have a volunteer um, that maybe actually have a high net worth, right? It is, you know, in your best interest to ask or to steward that relationship, right? But you got to be tactful about it and figure out for the right time and the right messaging uh, and sort of build build that case. Um, so I think there's just a couple, you know, things um, around volunteers that we should be thinking about. And then obviously the last thing I'll sort of stop, and I'm sure there's questions, uh, is, you know, how are you managing the, 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 the data around your volunteerism, right? And how are you tying that into your donor database and your CRM? Are all your systems talking together, right? right? Because in order to be able to make those asks for volunteers, you got to kind of see who's a volunteer, who's a donor, um, and then sort of layer in some of that additional information to, to have the most impactful ask. I feel like, you know, asking volunteers to also make a financial contrib contribution has been a point of contention for ages, <laughs> you know, and I've I've been in multiple conversations, as I'm sure we all have. You know, where organizations are like, well, we can't do that. That's that's rude. That's inconsiderate. Right. But then I also know the flip script of that, where some of the volunteers that give generously of their time have also given generously of their dollars. So I don't I don't understand why it's such a point of contention, because, as you said, Josh, the worst they can say is no. And really, that's a no, not right now. <laughs> I think that's right. And you got to make the ask relevant or, I mean, you know, $5 is more than $5 that you had before or $25, right? Maybe they can't go big and maybe it's $25 once a year, but it's still, I think it's, it's a meaningful gift, right? And I think the other piece, right, that related to that is board giving, right? And if your board is not giving, my question is why, right? Are they, should they still be on the board, right? Because that is a level of commitment that should be an expectation, if you're going to sit on a board now, like there's always occasion, you know, exceptions to that. But in general, that's that's the rule um, that we advise people to do. And so I think the question is, and and board, you know, oftentimes are volunteers, right? And so it starts there. And so how do you build a culture um, that supports both volunteers and you know donors, financial donors? And how do you sort of weave the two together? Because I think there is a there is a connection there that's really important to, to take a look at. Absolutely. You know, I, I agree. And I think this is a, such a, a missing link. Um, and and not to, you know, I don't know if you're ready to talk about this or not, but Bloomerang has made investments in volunteer management. And I don't know if you can share a little bit about that with us, but it seems to me that you know, even just starting at the school level, look at how many public and private schools are ending their day early on Fridays and they're expecting those students and sometimes their families to volunteer for the rest of the day. I mean, we're getting a culture of, of expectation and moving this forward, but yet the nonprofits aren't s seeming to align this data and looking at this as a, a future pipeline. Can you talk to us a little bit about what the technological aspect of this might be looking like? Yeah, this is great. Great question. So um, we did, we recently made an investment uh, in volunteer management uh, software to add to the uh, Bloomerang portfolio of uh, tools. And the, the reason we did that is our customers, our clients were asking for it, right? How can I better manage my volunteer data? How can I tie that in with my financial donations, my, my, my donor database, right? So that I can see a true full picture um, of my donors, right? And that uh, that was a ask that came from, from our customers. And some were sort of using the donor database, um, we're figuring out creative ways to do it within the donor database. Well, now we have a whole um, solution that makes it easier from the acquiring volunteers to screening them to scheduling them that oftentimes is one of the most the difficult yes. pieces about it right you have all yes. these volunteers you have all you know all these opportunities how do you match them together without sort of losing your mind and play, you know and turning gray right and so I think that is um, so the tool sort of helps streamline that whole process 
And then depending on, you know, sort of what you like a school or a food pantry or a Habitat for Humanity build, right? Or we know a lot of nonprofits do events and they need volunteers to staff at various events from its setup to day of to, you know, tear down, right? Yeah. All of that scheduling, right, can be done. And then the day of or sort of when the volunteer is engaging, there's actually we there's a built uh, an app that comes with it. And so we can do messaging in real time. And so, you know, if it's an event, that's really becomes really uh, relevant. If it's a Habitat for Humanity build, you know, we're taking a break for lunch or, you know, meet here. Maybe it's the, that morning of here's the directions to make sure here's where we need to be and, you know, be prepared with this equipment or this, you know, wear this attire. So just really streamlining that. And then the bonus, it all ties into the CRM, right? And so I think, I hate sort of being a, a commercial, but I think as you're kind of looking at this, it's, um, and you're trying to figure out what technology as a nonprofit should you be investing in and sort of how does it all tie together, right? That's just the big piece of that is how can you find a software and solutions that ties together? It doesn't have to be Bloomerang, right? There are a number of other sort of solutions out there um, as we talked about earlier. Uh, but I do think it, that's a really important thing that you should be asking, right? Do you just, how can I track my volunteers? How can I track their investment and how does that tie into um, their overall giving, both time and money? Yeah, I think it is so critical. It is a huge piece that I feel like really gets um, fractured in the organizations itself, like in the day-to-day -day operations. And I feel like there's also this tug of war of, does the volunteer uh, management, does that reside within programs or within development, right? Yeah. And like, <laughs> and how do we find the best fit or do we make dotted lines? So really talking about this now is just, it's so critical because I'm just fascinated to hear how organizations decide to move forward with it. Yeah. No, well, I mean, I think that's a really good call out. And this is the like in, in, in B2B, right? Sales, it's like marketing and sales, right? Who owns the, right. rela <laughs> the relationship yes, and then nonprofits. It's, it's, true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Program development, you know? It's very yeah. true. Well, yeah, I and, love that the um, fundraising effect effectiveness project has called this out in a way that it is, um, it's not just a boo-hoo moment over the last 12 months, but it's really looking forward for the next decade. And so I love that this is something that is something we're looking at, or I should say you are looking at and right. then reporting back to us because it's really critical. Um, talk to us again about this work it is this this data is being released almost throughout the year right yeah, yeah quarterly it is publicly available you do have to fill out a form um to, to to gain access to it but as a fundraiser right i think it's really good to to keep up to the trends right and also sort of use this to benchmark where you are right we didn't, uh, we, we talked a little bit about donor retention. They spend a lot of time in the effectiveness project around donor retention and the trends over time. Mm -hmm. And um, the, um, sorry, I think we had like a little earthquake because my camera just, oh. <laughs> San Francisco, right? You're oh. just doing a podcast and like everything moves a little bit. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, um, that's a first for the nonprofit show. I know. Either that, I don't know, but like the camera definitely was like, I'm, I'm like, okay, but we're good. Um, so <laughs> as not as nonprofits, I think what we're looking at is the donor retention rate. The average is like in the low 40s, right? And how do you compare to that, right? Yeah. And then um, the first time donor retention, right, that went up a, a little bit uh, over the previous year. And so how, that's a good sign. So first time donor retention, meaning the people who gave for the first time last year gave again this year. Um, that's a, that is a promising sign. But then how are you benchmarking yourself as a nonprofit? Are you above those numbers? Are you below those numbers? And I think as, as fundraisers, um, as nonprofit executives, it is important to have those benchmark marks in your pocket. Um, obviously, there's will vary to community to community and uh, type of organization to type of organization, but there is um, there is a uh, there's a lot of really good data in there. So I highly encourage folks to check it out. It's all free. Well, I also want to make note of literally minutes before we went live today, an email was disseminated from Bloomerang, right? And the subject line is 50% of donors lapse every year. I saw that, Jarrett, right as I was getting ready. Yeah. 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 And that to me, it's, that it's stunning. 
stunning, right? Wow. It's um, it, it tells me like there's work to be done, and um, again, just love nerding out over this and having the information then to make informed decisions. It's right. so critical. So, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, Josh. You know, again, I want to commend you and your teams for sharing your data. There's so many folks especially when we're talking about money in the nonprofit sector that they don't want to share this data because they're afraid of losing, you know, their market share or, you know, engagement pieces. And so, and Jarrett and I have said this from the get go, you all do an amazing job at, at sharing your knowledge. So thank you. Thank you. Cause that's a part of your culture. I would imagine. Yeah, it is our pleasure. I mean, I think if we can help, inform then as an industry we all rise up right and i think that is part of our culture right is this right. the sense of uh, uh empathy and sort of um care and you know taking care of one another and that is really just um that's how we operate at bloomerang and that's how i think it, most of our uh, team members you know operate that way as well so it's 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 uh yes <laughs> thank you okay. and thank you for having me super excited i can't remember i know we're talking again in june uh, but June or July, we'll have to uh, dive in. Uh, Giving USA will release their numbers um, so for all of 2022 towards the end of June. So we'll have to sort of uh, schedule another one of these talks and we can dive in and see uh, what Giving USA uh, that would be fantastic. And, you know, again, today's conversation clearly shook the earth because it yes. is groundbreaking information. <laughs> yeah. Josh, thank you again for those of you watching and listening. Josh Meyer, Vice President, Demand Generation at Bloomerang, wealth of knowledge, years of experience and expertise in the sector. Uh, again, so grateful to have Bloomerang as a partner and for all that you do to support, you know, missions throughout uh, the world. So really grateful to have you here. Thank you, Josh. And for those of you that have joined us, we're Julia and Jarrett. Um, I feel like... Um, what was the Ladmo and something? I don't know. Oh, it's Ladmo. Oh my God. Ladmo. How could you not know that? I don't know. Just as I said, we're Julia and Jared. It sounded like we're Wallace and Ladmo, but you yeah. know, <laughs> really glad to be here uh, and to serve alongside in these conversations. You know, when we started this, it literally was a labor of love. Bloomerang was absolutely one of our very first supporters. Um, and there, and then after the show, we would, we would go to bed. Like we were like, oh my God, what did we do? And now I'm so energized because we have such high level conversations, uh, talking about really what's moving the needle and moving, moving the ground. Uh, so thank you to our presenting sponsors that believe in us and believe in the great work of all of you and, and what you're doing. So again, thank you to Bloomerang American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at the National University. Join us. Actually, Josh and I will also be there June 1 at the Cultivate Conference. Also want to say thank you to Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Tech Talk, Nonprofit Nerd, and Staffing Boutique. Uh, again, check out these companies because they're really here for you. Just like you heard from Josh and Bloomerang, all of these companies really do want to support you. So please do check them out. It's been amazing. Hey, everybody. I mean, I think this was a first to be broadcasting and have an earthquake, but like Jarrett said, you really do move the earth and, and we get all shake, shaken up when we talk to you. So it was fitting that we would have that. Be safe, my friend. And as we like to end every episode of The Nonprofit Show, we want to remind everyone to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone. Josh, Jarrett, thank you so much. Thank you.